Hello, I'm Jay Nickel of Nickel Investigations. I'm here to tell you about our next episode of Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast, coming this Sunday, January 28th. On Friday, April 27, 1973, at about 7.30 a.m., 18-year-old Tony Escaro, a student at Downsview Collegiate, was on his way to a basketball game at his school and taking a shortcut through a vacant lot in Toronto. As he walked north on the east side of the lot, he discovered the fully clothed bodies of two females lying together in a pool of blood. Scarrow went to a nearby factory at 949 Wilson Avenue and called police, who attended at the scene a short time later and an investigation into the deaths was commenced. The two victims were identified as 17-year-old Donna Stern and 17-year-old Wendy Ann Tedford. Autopsies reveal that both girls had been shot in the head. The shells recovered and indicated a 32 caliber weapon had been used. Please consider subscribing to Ontario Cold Cases, a podcast on Patreon, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Hello, I'm Jay Nickel from Nickel Investigations. I'm here to tell you about some of the upcoming episodes of Ontario Cold Cases, a podcast. On September 1st, 1990, Lee Sousa, 13, died from severe head injuries after being raped and beaten near Cumberland Beach home north of Arroyo. Sousa's diminutive 80-pound mother, Laura, 36, suffered skull fractured and was left for dead, but survived the attack. The Sousas were asleep in their Beachview Avenue home when the intruders broke through the back door. The youngster was bludgeoned to death, her battered body then dragged into the backyard. Investigators have described the bloody scene as gruesome, and the attack is extremely vicious. Nine-month-old baby boy Michael was found unharmed in his crib. Hundreds of statements were gathered, but no murder weapon was found, no fingerprints were left at the scene, and no charges have been laid. The only physical evidence was a size 9.5 or 10 Nike shoe print on the kitchen floor. Authorities suspect the attacker is a male who lived in the area and knew the Seuss's were unprotected inside the home. So please consider subscribing to Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast, on Patreon, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Hello, I'm Jay Nickel from Nickel Investigations. I'm here to tell you about some of the upcoming episodes of Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast. Cindy Halliday, 17, from Waverly, Ontario. Unsolved murder in 1992. On June 16, 1992, a skull belonging to Cindy Halliday, 17, is found by a man walking his dog in a wooded area off of Horseshoe Valley Road, north of Barrie. Dental records confirm it belongs to the Waverly teen who was reported missing April 21st, the day after she had hitchhiked to Barrie. Insect experts said Halliday, who had been dismembered, may have lived up to a month after her disappearance. Clothing indicated she had been stabbed. There are also suggestions by investigators that her body may have been moved before it was discovered, but her remains had also been scattered by wild animals. Halliday, who often hitchhiked at Midland, Elmville, and Barrie, was seen at McMillan House, a halfway house on Barrie's Toronto Street, where she visited a friend. She was last seen alive that evening in Midhurst, hitchhiking home to Waverly, and may have gotten into a light-colored car, possibly a Chrysler LeBaron or Dodge Diplomat, although that has never been confirmed. Remains were found a short distance away. Please consider subscribing to Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast on Patreon, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Hello, I'm Jay Nickel from Nickel Investigations. I'm here to tell you about some of the upcoming episodes of Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast. Jake Just, 18, from Midland. Unsolved disappearance from 1998. October 30th, 1998, Jake Just, 18 years old, attended a party at a residence in the north end of Midland. He was last seen walking home from the party with a friend, but decided to take a shortcut through a wooded area. He was never seen again, even though an extensive and thorough search of that wooded area where he was last seen entering was conducted by police and volunteers. Please consider subscribing to Ontario Cold Cases, a podcast on Patreon, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Hello, I'm Jay Nickel from Nickel Investigations. I'm here to tell you about some of the upcoming episodes of Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast. Sonia Verishin, 42, from Orangeville. Unsolved murder from 2010. August 30th, 2010. After Sonia Verishin, a nurse, failed to show up for work, police were called to investigate. A few days later, OPP were contacted by a concerned Caledon citizen after finding human remains. They were later confirmed to be Verishin's. DNA testing throughout the community has continued, yet police have made no arrests in her murder. So please consider subscribing to Ontario Cold Cases, the podcast, on Patreon, Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts.